You know what? We live in the era of big data and how often I hear from people who are like, I need Hadoop, oh, I need, you know, some sort of NoSQL data store. In actual fact, what you need is a traditional relational database and understanding about how to use it. So join me for my top 10 MySQL tips. Tip number one, limit access to the database. There is nothing worse than granting select all, update all, do whatever you like privileges to your data warehouse to someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Limit access, more often than not, it has sensitive data in there. So make sure that people who require access have access to the data warehouse, but if they don't need it, don't grant it. Tip number two, go for a star scheme where possible. I know in university and in uh, database normalization lessons, you will have been taught how to normalize to the 15th normal form. For reporting purposes, use a star schema. It's generally quicker. There's less joins, there's less stuff that the database has to do at scale. So star it up. Tip number three, pick sensible data types. If you're doing joins, try and keep the join data type simple. If you're doing numerical stuff, don't go and pick double when all you're doing is storing an integer, that type of thing. Try and think ahead, try and plan what you're doing and store your data in simple data types because the database will have to do less processing to display your data. So making your queries quicker. Tip number four. Okay. Four, four, four. I my fingers don't do that. Check, check your explain plan for good indexing practices. Of course, when you're setting up a MySQL database, it does require indexing. It needs to have some sort of understanding as to what to optimize on. Index your primary keys, but then when you look at the actual queries that are being run, try and figure out what you can do. So take some query logs and run explain plan on the similar queries to see what the MySQL database is trying to do to return your data and see if you can come up with a better indexing strategy. Tip five, back up your data. There is nothing worse than making a change and accidentally destroying a data warehouse so you have to rebuild it again. Make sure you do backups, do full backups occasionally, do incremental backups, preferably every time you update the warehouse. You know, if it's a nightly update, do take backup seriously. MySQL dump is a great script. Take, dump your data warehouse to a file and then rsync it to a backup location somewhere that's preferably not on site and definitely, definitely not on the same server. Tip number six, optimize your joins. I know we touched on this a little bit earlier. Optimize your joins so that they make sense. You know, if you've got a date table, don't necessarily use a date uh, field as the join key because in reality, you're just joining a date in your data warehouse to a date in your date dimension. So use integers as a joining key. They're much quicker, they're much more lightweight. The, the database has to do less passing to figure it out. So, you know, have a think about what you can do to limit the work that the database has to do when joining these two tables. It will pay dividends in the long run. Tip seven, six, tip seven, tip seven. Tip seven, install your database on fast disks. Even if the actual operating system itself is on slower disks, try and put the storage location for the database itself onto some SSDs because it will just speed things up. The less scans that the disk has to do, the quicker your database will go. So disk IO is important. Try and optimize that as much as possible because the, the database can get the information back off a disk, the quicker the queries will get to a user, the quicker the users will get their information, the happier everyone will be. Tip number eight, play around with the query cache. So when you install MySQL, it comes with some reasonably sensible defaults in the query caching in the my.conf, uh, you know, MySQL config files. Once you've got your data in there and you understand what you're gonna do and how the data is gonna be accessed, have a tweak around. There's plenty of good tutorials online. I'm sure we'll do one on this channel 
in the coming weeks or months about how to tune those caches, play around with them and see what effect they have and see if you can tune the speed at which the data gets both into the database and more importantly for a data warehouse, how quickly it can get back out of it. Tip number nine, try and update your data warehouse out of peak hours. Uh, this might seem sensible, but it isn't to everybody. If your database is doing write jobs, the disk heads are somewhere else and not reading the data, and it takes effort for the database to read and write at the same time. If you're desperate for writing, think about replication and stuff like that, that will allow you to segment the write operations from the read operations. Updating your warehouse at three in the morning when no one is online and doing stuff is gonna be far more efficient from a speed and optimization point of view than updating your warehouse at 9.30 in the morning when all your staff colleagues have come into the office and are like checking their business intelligence reports and you know making sure that everything is right. So try and figure out a good time to do updates when no one's using it, or at least when less people are using it. Tip 10, we have reached the end. Tip number 10, optimize your queries. You will thank yourself for it later. The platforms these days are pretty good. If you're using some sort of self-service um, tooling, they're pretty good at generating decent SQL, but they're not as good as a human at generating SQL, largely. So if you are generating your own SQL, have a look at what you can do to optimize it. You'll speed things up, try and get the selects and the groups and the stuff in the right order. Similarly, if you're using a an OLAP tool like Mondrian or something like that, see what you can do to optimize the SQL that's being generated by the package that's being fed to your database so it's not going to sync the database when some user runs something that's crazy. So try and optimize your data. Nope. Try and optimize your queries as much as possible. It will make your life a lot easier. So there we have it. They were my quick 10 top tips for MySQL. If you found them useful, give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't find them useful, give the video a thumbs down. Let me know in the comments what you found useful. If I've missed anything, I'm sure I've missed loads of like really useful stuff or if I've said something incorrectly, do let me know in the comments below. If you've liked it and you want to see more, click the subscribe button, it's down there somewhere. Subscribe to the channel. We come back every Tuesday with bits and pieces for Tech Tuesday. There's lots of stuff all about data warehousing and databases and analytics in general. Thanks for watching, bye for now.